everybody, it's James Lindsay. You are listening to New Discourses Bullets, where I kind of distill one topic from woke Marxism into a bullet point summary of what you need to know so we can stop and defeat it. And due to many, many, many requests to do this, today I'm covering the idea of resilience. Now I have to narrow this down so I cover only one topic. I'm covering emotional resilience in education. And the reason that I'm narrowing it down is because there's also the idea in the world economic form of creating resilient systems, which means ones that are under their control. Today, though, we're talking about resilience programs in education, which are going to be resilience programs under the broader umbrella of mental health initiatives, mental health projects, all of these things that are looking to turn our schools even more into medical facilities and hospitals for our children, which of course will eventually be under the direction and guidance of the CDC. Now, we've talked in the past a lot about social-emotional learning, and social-emotional learning, as it turns out, is sold as a resilience or emotional resilience building program. So I'm just going to read to you a little bit from something, then I'll tell you what it is to give you an idea of what we're dealing with. So here is uh, a description of emotional resilience. Emotional resilience is the capacity to draw upon positive emotions to cope with negative and stressful experiences. Remember, this is what they want school to be about. This requires regulation of emotional response. In order to demonstrate emotional regulation, individuals need to be mindful, recognize emotional information, identify positive and negative emotion, mindfully self-regulate emotion to maintain positive affect. This malleability in emotional state to ensure positive affect has been shown to have several positive outcomes because of its adaptive value. So the goal is to create a malleability in an emotional state to ensure positive outcomes under certain stressful circumstances. They bill in this same piece social emotional learning as a fundamental skill building arena in which uh, emotional resilience can be developed as an educational project. So again, this is the schools teaching your children emotional resilience. It says social and emotional learning, SEL, has emerged as competencies through which individuals recognize and regulate emotions, identify positive purpose, demonstrate empathy for others, take constructive action, and promote human flourishing. With origins in emotional intelligence, SEL skills are powerful competencies since they have been shown to A, facilitate learning, B, build emotional resilience, C, promote pro-social behavior, and D, instill pluralistic thinking. Now, that all sounds okay until you realize, like always, every woke term conceals an agenda. So, What is social-emotional learning geared for emotional resilience aiming to teach? Regulating emotions. Well, that can mean a lot of things. Let me give you an example. Back in the day, we used to have to deal with Robin D'Angelo's theory of white fragility. Well, what is the opposite, the antonym of fragility? (laughs) Well, it's resilience, isn't it? So if you get accused of racism under white fragility theory and you disagree or you stay silent or you object or you get upset or any of this, you've demonstrated white fragility, which is a form of demonstrating your racism, which is also demonstrating a lack of racial resilience. And so we understand when it says to regulate emotions that in at least another related context within the woke umbrella, what resilience and regulating emotions means is accepting the accusation of racism and pledging to do better. In other words, is accepting your brainwashing. Identifying positive purpose is another thing that it builds. According to whom? Who gets to decide what constitutes positive purpose? What if positive purpose is genuinely pro-social? Well, maybe that's okay. Maybe it's not the school's job, but maybe that's okay. What if positive purpose is, I don't know, attaining the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of Agenda 2030 and turning your children into foot soldiers for a global agenda that nobody voted for? Well, that would be kind of whack. What if positive purpose is becoming a social justice warrior, as it's called, or engaging in racial justice activism, or taking up Democratic Party activist talking points? What is positive purpose? Is it to transform the world for the better? Well, we'll come back to that. 
demonstrate empathy for others. Well, we've already seen the weaponization of the concept of empathy for others and seen that this is all about the woke thing. And we know that's how SEL is being put into practice. We know that transformative SEL is rooted in critical pedagogy, which is the Marxist theory of education. And we also know that it is used specifically to say that we're going to have empathy for others in terms of systemic power dynamics described by the critical theories of identity. So that's just going to be to manipulate emotions to further woke agendas. Take constructive action. Well, again, who's defining constructive here, right? Is it constructive in the sense of, I don't know, achieving the 17 sustainable development goals of United Nations Agenda 2030 and promoting human flourishing? Well, that's one of those woke things where human flourishing only exists when they have all the power and we're under their kind of woke communist program. So is that what they mean? Is that what emotional resilience through social emotional learning is about? Now, I didn't tell you what document this is, so now we get to do the big reveal. This is a document from UNESCO called SEL for SDGs. I didn't use the example of the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations Agenda 2030 glibly. It turns out that this document is saying that social emotional learning with the key purpose, as in it has in giant letters in the title of the article, Education for Emotional Resilience, is actually social emotional learning is for emotional resilience for achieving the sustainable development goals. So we can assume that when I just said that maybe what they mean by developing emotional resilience through the program of social emotional learning, and I allege that maybe it has something to do with being the opposite of white fragility or whatever kind of fragility, and uh, in other words, taking your brainwashing well and learning to uh, achieve somebody else's agenda and become an activist for it, that maybe I wasn't barking up a crazy tree. I was actually barking up the right tree because this paper here published by UNESCO in their publication called Blue Dot, uh, which is also put forth by the MGIEP, um, which focuses on education for emotional resilience programs, which our governors, Republican and Democrat, are cramming into our schools across the country, uh, are all about achieving the sustainable development goals as an educational outcome. So let me read a little bit about this with uh, just to give you a flavor of what this article is really about. The sustainable development goals, SDGs, are not necessarily a set of consistent objectives, but rather a series of potentially conflicting goals. From the perspective of the development agent, these conflicting objectives entail inconsistencies in actions and antecedents needed to attain the sustainable development goals. For example, eradicating poverty, a societal objective, might entail, at least in the short term, working the self to the point of compromising, uh, compromising personal well-being, another sustainable development goal. Another clear example of such conflicts is the slow progress or even resistance to climate change policies because of the relationship across work choice, economic growth, and climate change. Thus, attainment of these goals may necessitate a balancing act. Development agents, that's your kids, by the way, may consider multiple options and make trade-offs. And then the, that's the introduction. So the SDGs are internally contradictory. It's onerous. It's a lot to put on a kid that might create dissonance. So the next section is called dissonance in the SDGs. And they write at the level of the individual and social collectives, these trade-offs in sustainable development goals will be quite taxing because the conflicting goals are in effect inconsistent cognitions, generally referred to as cognitive dissonance or just dissonance. According to dissonance theory, one of the most tried and tested theories in the behavioral sciences, inconsistent cognitions evokes aversive arousal states that lead to attitudes and behaviors aimed at reducing the arousal. Dissonance is constituted by two important social psychological processes, inconsistency among cognitions, a more rational phenomenon referred to as cognitive discrepancy, and the unpleasant emotional and motivational state that arises from holding two contradictory cognitions referred to as dissonance. That sounds like it's pretty bad. That's what they're saying teaching the SDGs causes. So they need to use social emotional learning to overcome that, to teach the kids something called emotional resilience, which means being able to stomach that dissonance. In large pull quote letters, it says dissonance is unpleasant. Uh, 
The aversive arousal state is because inconsistent cognitions impede effective and unconflicted actions. The unpleasant emotive state of dissonance motivates attitude changes or engagements in other dissonance reduction processes, hence encounters with dissonance trigger a variety of dissonance reducing cognitions, attitudes and behaviors that align with cognitions sorry, that align cognitions with behavioral commitments to facilitate the execution of effective, unconflicting actions. For example, it has been widely demonstrated that following a dissonance-triggered decision, people alter their attitudes to be more consistent with their choices. In other words, they're doing this as a brainwashing exercise. They trigger the dissonance, they create the trauma, and then they use psychological tools and social tools to manipulate kids into getting the so so-called right answer to resolve their dissonance to resolve that discomfort to create a sense of open discomfort and then to urge them into the so-called right answer to be facilitated in the language of critical pedagogy into it they go on to say this is the case because following a dissonance triggered decision psychological processes are deployed to assist with the execution of the decision this process involves post decision views of the chosen alternative in a more favorable light and the rejected option in a more negative light so as to help the individual follow through and act on the decision in a more effective manner. So that idea that in critical pedagogy, the instructor becomes a facilitator into correct understanding, right human relations or whatever, and into correct action becomes a tool for brainwashing. And they say that dissonance has important implications for the attainment of the sustainable development goals. It strains development agents, rational cognitive discrepancy and emotional aversive arousal capacities to reflect, self-regulate, and act in pursuit of the attainment of those goals. So this is what this is really about. This is what SEL for SDGs is about. This is why, in fact, this is the section in which they talk about the emotional resilience, which is where I started. Emotional resilience is a capacity to draw upon positive emotions to cope with these experiments. Experiences, sorry. The this requires regulation of the emotional response. In order to demonstrate emotional regulation, individuals need to be mindful, recognize emotional information, identify positive and negative emotion, mindfully self-regulate emotion to maintain positive affect, blah, 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 and social-emotional learning is designed to do it. So what do they mean when they say that social-emotional learning is for attaining the uh, emotional resilience necessary to achieve the sustainable development goals. That's what they mean by resilience. What they mean is that this is a brainwashing program that teaches children to recognize and regulate emotions. They don't spaz out when they're having this put on them, identify positive purpose. In other words, be directed into believing that this is a necessary thing to do that brings them self-esteem and value, demonstrate empathy for others according to the contrived terms of sustainable and inclusive dynamics, take constructive action according to the directions of these activists and promote human flourishing as defined by the United Nations and its Agenda 2030. So resilience is a code word that means taking your brainwashing well. Social emotional learning is a tool used in the schools explicitly to facilitate emotional resilience in children while being asked very specifically, unambiguously, while being asked to become activists on behalf of inherently nonsensical and self-contradictory and onerous and even impossible demands for activism, like eradicating hunger, eradicating poverty totally, working to save the climate, but also to have well-being, blah, blah, blah. Resilience programs in education are a code word that means taking your brainwashing well, teaching children to accept their brainwashing into activist agendas, whether that's diversity, equity, and inclusion agendas, whether that's belonging agendas, we all just want a place where everybody feels like they belong, which is woke nonsense. Or actually, it's not woke nonsense, it's woke Maoism is what it is, as I've explained in other places. And finally, to achieve the sustainable development goals. Like I said, the resilience program is like a hamster wheel. They actually put these demands on the kids 
And then they use the social emotional learning to show that the kids are having emotional ch challenges. And then they use the social emotional learning to get them to take their brainwashing well, to overcome those emotional challenges and direct them into activism by activating their social and emotional concerns and fears and the cognitive dissonance, just like they described. And then they say, oh my gosh, the kids are all stressed out. We need more resilience programs. The kids are stressed. They're anxious. They're depressed. This isn't sitting well with them. They're breaking down. We need even more resilience programs. That's something I described in a previous past, a previous episode of the podcast called uh, something like um, the SEL cycle, where they do SEL to break kids and then use the broken kids as evidence that they need more SEL to fix the kids in a cycle that goes on forever. This is what emotional resilience and these resilience programs under the mental health umbrellas in schools are about. They are about teaching kids not to be fragile, where fragile is understood in the same way as white fragility, but for the broadest activist agenda. So they're teaching kids to be activists, realizing that this upsets the kids in a variety of ways, including inducing cognitive dissonance when the activism itself doesn't make sense. And then they use that as an excuse to teach them to swallow their brainwashing better. That's what resilience is about. When you hear the word resilience, you need to think of the concept, the very fraudulent concept of white fragility. And remember that the opposite of fragility is resilience. And that's what they're actually teaching, taking your brainwashing well. <laughs>